Good morning, friends of vinyl. Some more records before I put them back into the place on the shelf. And uh, let's start with something really awful, <laughs> which is uh, this record here. Oh yes, the soundtrack to the movie Bloodsport. Now, um, there are actually only two proper songs on this, on this record. One called Fight to Survive and On My Own Alone, which is a ballad. I don't care so much about them, but the rest of the album is sort of a synthesizer noodling by Paul Herzog. And uh, while I should be actually rather appalled by that, I find it strangely intriguing. I mean, it is, uh, it's sort of a musical phrasing that is supposed to support the idea of being in Hong Kong, in China. So it's rather a uh, musical cliche of sorts. But uh, it's a nice listen. I don't know why. I, don't, I should not like it, but I do. So um, this is my uh, Bloodsport soundtrack. And I mean, it's probably a guilty pleasure by definition. But um, yeah, leave people their perversions. And I've seen worst. So uh, to restore my reputation, here's a nice album, which is the Sinfonietta by Leos Janáček. Now this is of course a classical album. Janáček is one of the great four names of Czech classic composing, next to, of course, uh, Antonín Dvořák, Petřich Smetana and Josef Suk. Uh, he was a very uh, expressionistic composer. Um, I mean, most of his famous compositions kind of fall into the years 1910-1920. So you might be familiar with the opening theme of the Sinfonietta in the Allegretto in the first movement, which comes with these sort of Wagnerian uh, brass fanfares, but it has been incorporated into uh, a song by Emerson Slack and Palmer called The Knife Edge on their debut album. So that's where this tune comes from. But um, the other four movements are rather... Well, I... Uh, this music kind of reminds me of my childhood in Czechoslovakia. It, it has a feeling of summer to me. I mean, it, it's, it makes you imagine sort of these late August fields um, under a dark blue sky with these heavy clouds. Um, it's, a very, it's a very good example of sort of Slavic classical music um, and you should give it a try. It's, um, the Sinfonietta is relatively short, so uh, as the name says it's, not, it's, a, it's, a, it's the little symphony and um, depending on the conducting speed it's somewhat 20 to 25 minutes long. So um, I think you can easily find this on uh, on, uh, on YouTube or somewhere. Just give it a try. Uh, it's a it's it's a piece of classical music that once you get into it a little bit, it can be very enjoyable. Now this was conducted uh, by Václav Neumann, whom you can see here, which was a rather famous Czech conductor and professor of music at the university and so on. It comes with liner notes, but I mean. There are dozens and dozens of records uh, around with the Sinfonietta. So, that was that. Now, since you probably noticed by now that I have a proclivity for Japanese pop music, what about this one? <laughs> Bamboo Houses, Bamboo Music by David Sylvian and Ryuichi Sakamoto. Now, of course, Sylvian and Sakamoto have been friends for well since the early 80s but they didn't do that much together like two or three recordings but uh, what they did is always very intriguing and very fantastic and I really like this 12 inch so there are only two songs here um, this was probably 1981 I would say is this but now 82 I always get the year wrong by like a one or two years. So here you have this red label and this black label. Um, so, I really like this. Um, there is also this uh, 
CD, or is a CD single you would call it probably, which sort of accompanied uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto's uh, Heartbeat uh, album. But what's so cool about it also, amongst other things, is that uh, it has a new recording of Forbidden Colors by Sylvian and Sakamoto, which sounds a bit different than the version basically everybody knows. But it's it's a nice, it's a nice little, nice little CD box, sort of for collectors. It comes with these cards, which look like that. And if you turn them around, you get the artist's faces. Yes, some all the nerdy stuff for me. <laughs> And while we are talking about Japanese musicians, there's another album by Yukihiro Takahashi. This time this is New Romantic, which he did in 1981. This is the one that came out in 1981. Um, yeah, I said it before, I like Yukihiro Takahashi's albums. I think they're highly listenable and um, you know, over the course of time you pick up some songs that are really extraordinary. Here in this case uh, Drip Dry Eyes is a really nice one and Curtains, which I think Curtains is a composition by Ryuichi Sakamoto. But you find a lot of uh, big names on this album, like um, Phil Manzanera guitars, uh, no big deal. <laughs> There's of course Hideki Matsutake, um, who did all kind of programming and computerization which in 81 was quite a big deal, but um, Hideki Matsutake was of course part of the uh, Yellow Magic Orchestra outfit. You can see him quite a lot if you look up some of these uh, YMO videos on YouTube, sort of their uh, uh, US tour, and um, so he's the guy surrounded by these giant <laughs> stacks of synthesizer modules. So inside there is this nice uh, nice booklet that goes with it. It's sort of always sort of a romantic side of Takahashi, these photographs. Um, now here comes the probably cheesiest picture he ever done, which is this one. <laughs> which could be something out of a teenage magazine. Um, it's so nice and neat and clean. Until you discover all these, all these cigarette butts in the corner. Yeah, you know these Japanese. They spend so much effort to kind of appear as dirty as we Europeans are, but it's not easy. So inside, of course, if you unfold it, you can keep unfolding it, and uh, you get all kind of lyrics and impressions and so on. So, uh, nice album, um, it's, it came out on Alpha, like most of Yukihira stuff is on Alpha. And this is actually a US pressing. I like all of Takahashi's albums, this is probably not my favorite one, but um, who cares. So. Now this one is a nice little find I did like 15 years ago. It looks like nothing. Golden Hit Songs Volume 1. So this is a sort of a compilation of the early 60s uh, pop songs uh, from Japan. Names that I do not know, um, but it's kind of a dominated by uh, Mita Akira and Misawa Akemi and Frank Nagai. Actually Frank Nagai I heard before. Um, but I really like the songs. I mean, I have a sort of a knack for all kind of old music, like uh, sort of a salon music from the 20s and the German Schlager from the 30s and 40s. Um, so, of course, uh, I cannot uh, pass by a record with uh, so very early Japanese pop music or very early Japanese jazz. This is always exciting for me. It's kind of like, I don't know if you if you remember uh, the movie and the TV show MASH and this kind of music that was always running uh, in this camp uh, out of these loudspeakers. So uh, that's the sort of style. I love this. Now this came out on Japanese Victor, so you get his master's voice here. 
just this time surrounded by Japanese script. So I really like this one. This is just, I mean, those those purchases is typical flea market stuff, so this is hit and miss. But uh, sometimes it can be really quite a hit, personally. I mean, I, I don't expect everyone to like this. <laughs> that would be awkward. So the next one, quite famous. Non-stop erotic cabaret by the Soft Cell. Now oh, this is really a classic 80s album, quite unforgettable. Now of course everybody knows it because there is Tainted Love on it. But while Tainted Love of course was a cover version, there is a lot of original material there by, by Mark Almond and David Ball and Frustration I really like. Uh, CD Films is quite funny. Sex Dwarf is pretty much an um, underrated uh, cult dance floor track. So um, this is a wonderful album overall, but this is really listenable from the beginning to the end. And additionally to this, I have that, which I really like. Um, that's the This was a reissue from Germany, I think 1985 or something like that. So this is a 12-inch um, version of uh, Tainted Love. But first, first it came on 1981 on some bizarre, um, and as I said, this was reissued by Vertigo like four or five years later uh, in this not so good looking 12 inch. But I love this version. This is a very long version um, that some of you maybe know. It's like nine minutes, um, which kind of morphs into Where Did Our Love Go, which is of course a wonderful Tom Lamont Town song. And uh, but of course in this. Um, soft cell Mark Almond style uh, fashion and it, f it works very well I like it and finally Never Forever by Kate Bush now this here is the second second album I ever got it's a bit banged up the whole <laughs> actually a lot of lot of scotch tapes on it and stuff like that but I mean, when I got it, I was like, I think I was 14 or 15, not 15, I would say, and um, this was borrowed out quite a lot, mostly girls at school. I even didn't have it for like a year, and I mean, I started to ask about it carefully after some months, and she just told me, oh yeah, I borrowed it to my best friend and ask her and blah, blah, so I finally got it back. So, I mean, the quality is probably not too good. Um, in terms of uh, used up vinyl, but well, it's not that bad. I mean, it's crackling a little bit, but um, I don't know. Sometimes you go after sound quality, and sometimes you just try try to kind of open this this can from this time and age, and then it doesn't matter if it's a little bit crackling. Now, of course. This is a superb album. It's actually a really a strike of genius. Probably only surpassed by uh, by the Hounds of Love. Um, it's a wonderful atmosphere, wonderful sounding album, with all kind of whimsical ideas um, that you probably never heard before and will never hear again, except on this album. And it's very very intelligent. I mean, if you go into the detail how the things are recording. And how they kind of correspond with the theme of the song. It's, it's, uh, it has humor, and um, it has um, amazing ideas. So um, I certainly hope you uh, you know this album already. This is a really peculiar backside. I always felt, but hey, that's Kate Bush. What can you do? Certainly one of my favorite musicians. So that was it for now. There will be more. Bye-bye.